Hi, in this video I'm going to give you an overview of how Pizolo can help you analyze your sleep data. The first thing you need to do is to start the program. So go to the start menu, look for the science app folder and click on the Pizolo icon. The first time you start the program you will be prompted with an option panel. You will be able to access the option panel at any given time later on, but there are at least three parameters that you must specify right on before you start. First, you need to tell Pizolo where it will be able to find the daily data processed by the data fetcher script. In this sample case, we are using the daily data folder located on the desktop that we have set in a previous video. Then, you'll have to tell the program where to save the results of the analysis. This can be anywhere you want, basically, on the desktop or, like in this case, in our document folder. You might also have to specify whether your input files have an extension which is different from default. And finally, you will need to specify the format of the input files, whether trikinetics, either channel or monitor files, or piece of video, for instance, measuring distance the flies walk, or, like in this case, number of times they cross the virtual beam. There are other options here, for instance, whether you want to use dropout flies, namely flies that die during the experiment, whether you want to change the limits that they select when the flies are dead, or whether you want to change the size of the figures when you export them, or the resolution, or the kind of colors you want to use when plotting, or other variables which are actually going to be specific for single panels, but I'm not going to details with them. Let's go back to the database window, which is where we really start using the program. The purpose of the database window is to help you keep track of all your experiments, namely of all the times you put flies in the incubator to record the sleep. All your experiments will be organized in a table which you can extend as much as you want by clicking on the plus button. Each row of the table usually represents one genotype tested at one given time. In this video we are going to analyze four different genotypes tested all together on the same date. So select the first row on your table and enter the data, start monitor, start channel, and monitor, and channel, the genotype name, some comment, and then the date, start, and end of the experiment. You can do the same for the second row, entering monitor 1, channel 14, and you can hit tab to switch from one cell to another and autocomplete in a smart way, like I did in this case. You can then enter the name of the genotype again, some comment, and the same date. For row 3 and 4, I will enter data for monitor 2, mutant B, and monitor Q, mutant C. I leave the data here in the date field blank, because I want to show you how to fill multiple cells at once using the mask. So I select row 3 and 4, which I want to fill at once, and then in the mask I enter the same date that I used for the other experiment, hit the arrow key, and you see that it's automatically filled in. Okay, so next thing I might want to do is to apply labels to my experiments. So for instance, I select the wild type and apply the wild type label here. So I now have one wild type category. Or I can select all the mutants and apply the mutant label, same way, hit on this button. And now I have a mutant category which comprises three rows. If I click on mutant or if I click on wild type, I can see either the mutants or the wild type, or I can click back to all and see all of them. When I'm ready, I save the file. In this case, I save it on the desktop. So this is going to be my main database. So now I'm ready to collect the data and start the analysis. To do this, I select all the rows which I intend to collect data for. In this case, all four of them. I go to the analysis menu here. And first thing you need to do is uh, click on check row data files. This will just make sure that the files that you need for the analysis are going to be where they need to be. So hit OK if it's successful, and then go and fetch raw data. Fetching raw data will be quite quick, and the result will then be a brand new analysis file, which is ready to be opened with the other portion of the program. The quickest way to start the analysis of the files you just created is to go to the Analysis menu and select Send Data to Analysis. This will open the Pizolo Data Analysis window, which you see here, and this is the window where actually all of the analysis will take place. On the right side of the window, you will have access to the different analysis panels, and on the left side of the window, you will have access to the navigation tree. 
So the navigation tree is where you actually select the flies that you want to visualize on the analysis panel on the right. You can click on single flies, you can click on single monitor, you can click on single date, or you can click on a single genotype that will average across all kind of information. Let's give an example. Let's start with the browser panel, which is the easier one to browse through data. We select mutant A from the navigation tree, and the browser panel will show us all the data about mutant A. That will be all the flies across all the days of the experiment. All information is averaged and displayed here over those three graphs. In the upper graph, you have the activity plot over the 24 hours. In the middle graph, sleep plot and in the lower graph, the hypnogram, which is actually relevant only if you're looking at single flies. You might want to increase the level of details at which you are analyzing your data, and so, for instance, click on a single day, and have the data for the single day plotted here in the same way. Or you might want to click on a single fly, for instance, channel 6, and this will allow you to look at the data of only a single fly during a single day. So this is a single fly activity, single fly sleep, and single fly hypnogram. Black means that the fly was asleep, and white means that the fly was moving, as you can see here. If you go back and click at the entire monitor, you will see the activity for all the 13 flies. And you will see this both graphically and also numerically in the lower panel. So that will be 13 flies, of which all of 13 were alive. You also have access to the total sleep time during the 24 hours, and its standard deviation the total sleep time for the relative day and the standard deviation, and for the relative night. You also have activity index and the color. The reason why you have color here is because you can actually visualize more than one fly or day or monitor at once on the same graph. Just select whatever you want to add to the graph, hitting the plus button here, and for instance now we are visualizing the mutant A and canton S on the same graph. Also canton S appears on the table down here, so you have 19 flies for canton S, of which 15 were alive and so on. Okay, now let's switch to another panel, for instance the single fly data panel, which shows the data for the single flies plotted in a two-dimensional graph. We select mutant A, and we add to it Canton S, as we did before, and this is particularly useful because we see the distribution of the two population fly by fly. This circle is a fly, and you have plotted on one dimension the amount of sleep they have every day, and on the other dimension the activity index. The size of each bubble is representative of the deviation, the standard deviation, that each fly has across those days. And again, you have a graphical view on top and a table view on bottom, which gives you a more detailed report on each single animal. One important feature of the program is that everything you see, this means graphical representation or tables, can be easily exported. Just click with the second mouse button on what you want to export, for instance a table, and you can select single data or export completely as a file, like we're doing now. Same is true for a figure, click with the second mouse button on the figure, you can copy it for including into a presentation, for instance, or save it. And you can save it as an image file, so with a, for instance, PNG or JPEG extension, or you can save it as a PDF file if you want to modify it in a vector graphical illustrator program. So let's continue to have a look at the other panels to see what other kind of analysis are possible with this program. In many cases, you might want to select more than two genotypes. So in this case, we can select all of the four genotypes that we have for this analysis they will all appear at the same time on the graph, each of them with a different color, and each color will be then represented in the table underneath. Once you have done your selection, you can move from panel to panel, and the selection will be maintained. So for instance, if we move to the day-to-day -day panel, where we have an analysis of the genotypes plotted day by day, with a sleep on the left and activity index on the right, you will see that the four genotypes are, are represented here, maintaining the same four colors. We can then move to the distribution panel that shows a plot of the distribution of the single genotypes, both in the candlestick or as normal representations. And we now move to the all data panel. The all data panel is particularly useful because it shows everything we know about the flies we're analyzing. Each row is again a single fly for a single day and you have all the information about an animal. 
genotype, the date, the monitor, the channel from 1 to 13 in this case, whether the animal is alive or not, and you have total sleep, relative daily sleep, relative night sleep, activity index, average length of sleep episode for the relative day, average number of sleep episodes for the relative day, and same thing for relative night, average length of sleep episode and average number of sleep episodes for the night. These are all single data, they don't contain any measure of error because there is no error in single data, but if you go to pool data, average data in the upper panel, then you see that each one of them has got their own standard deviation. Alright, talking about statistical error, let's now move back to the browser panel where I show you how to include error bars in your graphs. So by default you see that there are no error bars, but it's easy to produce them just going to Tools, Graphs, and select the option here. And now this panel will show error bars when relevant, and there's more than just the browser panel who has the ability to show error bars, also the sleep trend panel. And what the sleep trend panel does show is how total sleep or other measure of sleep change across time during the experiment. So in the upper panel you have the three days and for each color there's a different genotype. Whereas in the lower panels you have the average of the total sleep in this case for each genotype. You can change the parameter you're showing in some panels. For instance, here in the sleep trend you can change from total sleep to relative day sleep to relative night or activity index. So now here we're showing activity index instead of total sleep time. The final thing to highlight is that uh, many panels have the possibility to configure extra options which are accessible by clicking the button with the gear here. Um, here is the list of the panel with different options. And not only can you configure extra options, but you can also export the real raw data which lie underneath the panel. Ok, when you're done with your analysis you can save if you made modifications, after which you will exit from the program and you can continue working on the images that you have exported or tables or files.